Hi, this is Steve Walton from Tropic Heating and PatioHeat.com. Today we're going to take a look at this residence here. Second floor balcony. Uh, a couple things we want to take a look at. Number one, um, we have these uh, doors that open up to the outside uh, area. And also um, a ceiling height. That's quite tall for a patio heater, 17 at the apex here. But uh, average is nine at this uh, beam going across here. The patio dimensions are 38 feet by 16 feet. And again, we're going to call it about uh, nine foot height here. <clears throat> These posts are roughly nine and a half feet center from each other. So let me turn that off. What I would uh, propose for an application like this is something like uh, Infratex, uh, either <clears throat> a WD or a CD model. Whoops, sorry about that. So this is a CD. You can see that the uh, brackets are not at the end here. They're offset. Um, so they could be mounted. Uh, you, know, you, could, you could put a backing plate on here and maybe ma match this one up over here. <clears throat> but I have this position this way specifically so I can kind of show you what we need to be cautious about with door openings and things of that nature so we need 18 inches of clearance to the side of the heater and all around this front edge from the front heater here down we need 48 inches so sorry about that so this is 48 down but we need to have a minimum 18 and with the door here um, that could present an issue so we need to make sure we address that and uh, I'm going to turn that off here. And of course, we need the uh, six inches from the back heater to any combustible uh, around. And just take a look at the, what we have over here. We have the same CD model. And um, sorry about that. So we have three going along this edge here with them centered on each one of these beams. And then an, an additional heater over here again offset from the center of the existing patio. Now this is why I have them offset over here. If you can see the footprint of the heater, um, there'd be a lot of overlapping if I had the two end units um, centered in the patio. Now you can do that, it's not a problem. However, um, I was hoping to get a little bit more coverage over here but that might, may not be necessary, especially with this particular unit here. So having them in the center might be a better option. Let me just turn off that dimension here for a second. So let's just say we move it over to the center. That's just rough center there. And uh, you'll get a better footprint this way. You might uh, also see that uh, with this unit here, if we just deleted that for a second, you know, we wouldn't get that total throw over here and another thing just to think about is if we were to move this heater along the uh, slope of the ceiling you can see that um, as we go up and up and up eventually the uh, anticipated or, or um, projected amount of heat that we're going to cast from this heater um, isn't really going to be the optimal amount of heat the higher up we go. So this heater is optimal for about 10 foot off the floor. And you can see how this these ones over here um, they cast heat they don't actually cast heat through objects but you can see how their projected uh, cast is beyond the surface here but I have them hotter because I want to cast the heat out further here now you will feel the heat um, out here it's just not going to be the optimum temperatures so let's go back here I just had this other uh, unit over here kind of give you a comparison so this footprint here is a 10 by 12 footprint and you can see one CD model at 10 foot off the ground is going to give you that 10, uh, 10 by 12 footprint. 
And uh, this one over here at the angle, I'm gonna delete that for a second. This one here at the angle, um, you can see that it doesn't quite give you that full throw of the 10 by 12. Now, this ray will physically cast out and keep on traveling, but it's, again, it's not the optimum amount of heat that you're looking for when you're outdoors. So um, when you have the unit uh, above, you get a more even flow of heat to cover that 10 by 12 footprint or whatever the heater might be. There's other heaters out there that will put out different footprints for different applications. So in any case, I just wanted to show you that. And other than that, um, this patio here doesn't have a total coverage, but again, we have some issues with the doors. And if I put it up against the wall, you know, I still have to be meet these clearances to these doors, and that's going to be present an issue. You could hang the heater, you know, from uh, some type of strapping that comes down so that it's low enough to, you know, still produce the amount of heat that you're looking for. But um, I kind of think that would look a little intrusive here. So this would be my recommendation for this particular application. It would work well. It's not going to work perfectly. Um, another thing I wanted to show is just if you were inside, let's say, looking out, um, you know, you're going to see these along that beam. So you really want to kind of uh, make sure you place these heaters so that the beam, um, the heaters are centered in the beam, uh, centered the bracket, I should say. And of course, if you're looking at this particular model here, you have to really look up to get a visual of that one. So in any case, uh, that's what I have for you today. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions about your heater application or you need some assistance in your design, feel free to give us a call. I'm Steve Walton from Tropic Heating and PatioHeat.com. Have a great day.